Hey guys, Mrs. Malott. We are going to start chapter 12 here today. Um, we're going to go through the first few slides. Chapter 12 is a pretty big chapter, but it, it has a lot of information and um, uh, so it'll take us a little bit to get through. Uh, and at the end, we have a kind of a fun little thing to do where you can maybe um, mix some fake blood and how see how they determine blood types and that kind of thing. So hopefully we'll be able to get to that. But in the meantime, we're going to get started here. So sometimes when we talk about the cardiovascular system, you might hear it referred to as just the circulatory, or you might hear it referred to as the cardiovascular, meaning the heart and the blood vessels. Sometimes it's even combined with the respiratory system and called the cardiopulmonary. But basically, the um, the heart or the cardiovascular system has some big functions and first of all its job is to transport nutrients and oxygen to the cells um, it also helps remove the cardi or carbon dioxide and any kind of waste products that our body may have and get rid of them um, it circulates the carbon dioxide back to our lungs where we breathe it out the waste products go to our kidneys and we pee it out so it's very important in making sure that our body is functioning properly and working the way that it should the heart itself is about the size of your fist. So if you look about the size of your fist, on average, that is about what size your heart is. And around the heart itself is a wrapping or a membrane called the pericardium. Um, and it kind of just covers the entire heart. There, the layers of the heart, as far as that goes, there's actually three layers. The epicardium is the outer layer. Now it is made of a tougher um, connective type of tissue. The middle layer is myocardium. It is made of muscle. And when we learned about the types of muscle last year, this is where uh, the cardiac muscle comes into. But if you remember back that far, that muscle interlocks, see if I can do this here, interlocks like this. And the reason being uh, for that is that it can pump more effectively, push the blood around a little better. Um, and so that the blood can make it the whole way around the body and back to our heart again. The innermost layer is the endocardium. It lines the inside of the heart. So as the blood comes into the heart, the, this is the layer of the heart that the blood is actually touching on the inside. So the outer layer is epi, inner is endo, and middle is myo. So make sure you get those um, kind of straight in your head. As the blood comes into your heart, it comes in on the right side. Now, remember, when you're looking at the patient, your left is the patient's right and vice versa. So it'll be your left side, but the patient's right. So as the blood comes in, it comes into the right side of the heart. Um, it goes through the right side of the, of the heart, down to the lungs, where the waste products, specifically carbon dioxide, get dropped off and through the process of diffusion, the um, blood is oxygenated. It gets taken back to the left side of the heart and then through the left side of the heart and then it goes out to the rest of the body. There are three types of blood vessels that we have in our body and I'm sure you've heard these before. The first one is veins. Uh, veins job is to carry uh, blood uh, back to the heart. Typically it's deoxygenated. We'll talk about a few exceptions to that, but for the most part um, it is deoxygenated in a vein. Um, now the smaller branches of a vein are called venules. The arteries are the second type of blood vessel. This carries oxygenated blood away, so arteries away. Um, and it's typically oxygen, oxygenated. And again, that is most of the time, we'll have a few exceptions and we'll talk about that as we go through this chapter. The smaller branches of this are called arterioles.
And last but not least, you have capillaries, which is the third type of blood vessel. Now this blood vessel is only one cell layer thick. And the reason being is because this is where that gas exchange occurs. This is where the oxygen is dropped off so they can be used in the waste product, the carbon dioxide and such are picked up and taken then back to the heart so we can get rid of it. So basically the way it works is our, the blood comes out of your heart and goes into arteries. The arteries branch down into smaller branches called arterioles. It goes through the capillaries, which are one cell layer thick, so that the gas exchange can occur, and into the smaller veins called venules, then to the veins, and then back to the heart. And it just repeats. It's just one big cycle, and it keeps going through. Um, in the heart, the blood gets circulated through four different chambers of the heart. You have the two upper chambers, which are referred to as the atria, whether it's plura, singular, it's atrium. So it's the right atrium and left atrium, but when you're talking about them together, they're the atria. Then you have the bottom two chambers of the heart, which are called ventricles. Um, again, the right ventricle and the left ventricle. In between the right side and the left side is a septum that's made of cartilage that separates and it keeps the blood from mixing. So it keeps the deoxygenated blood from mixing with the oxygenated blood, which will, is very important. You don't want deoxygenated blood going out to the rest of your body because then your body isn't going to get enough oxygen. So it kind of prevents that from happening. Now, as far as thickness goes, when you look at the heart, the upper and the lower parts of the heart have different thicknesses. The bottom is thicker because the ventricles are responsible for pumping. The right side pumps blood to the lungs and the left side pumps it to the entire rest of the body. So even though the bottom is thicker in general, the left side is even thicker than the right because it has to pump blood from the heart all the way around back to the heart again. So it has to do a little more work. In addition to the chambers of the heart, you also have valves that are in the heart and their job is to prevent the backflow of blood so that it doesn't go backwards. Um, you have two that are called atrioventricular valves or AV valves and those valves um, separate or divide the atria from the ventricles and these uh, valves have flaps and their names are based on the number of flaps that they have. The one that's between the right is the tricuspid valve. It has three flaps. And then the one between the left atria and the um, left ventricle are is called the bicuspid valve. Now, for some reason, just to make it a little more difficult, they also have a different name for the bicuspid valve. It's also called the mitral valve. Um, but you can use either term interchangeably, and it will it, it is fine. Now, if you want to remember which one is which, we already talked about how the blood comes into the heart on the right side first. So if you can remember tri before you buy, it goes through the tricuspid before it goes through the bicuspid. And that will help you remember which one is on which side of the heart. The other two kinds of, or the other kind of valve um, is the semilunar valve, and there's two of them. There is the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve, and their names come from the blood vessels that they're going to. So the pulmonary valve is off of the right ventricle and in uh, between the right ventricle and the um, pulmonary artery. Um, and the aortic valve is between the left ventricle and the aorta, which is the next artery. So they're named where they're going. So pulmonary valve, aortic valve. 
Now the last thing we're gonna talk about today is the blood flow around the heart. And I will tell you now, this is one of the things that every year students struggle a little bit with. So if I were you, I would start memorizing it now. And it is the steps that it takes to, to go through the heart. You have to be able to order them and put them in order. The blood comes into our heart through one of two veins, either the inferior vena cava or the superior vena cava. The inferior vena cava carries blood from the bottom part of our, our, our body and the superior vena cava carries blood from the upper part of our body. So it goes into, through those uh, veins into the right atrium it goes through the tricuspid valve, remember try before you buy, then it goes to the right ventricle, through the pulmonary valve, and into the pulmonary artery. Now I want to point out something here to you guys. Remember I said typically arteries carry oxygenated blood. Here is one of the exceptions to that rule, uh, but it is an artery because it carries it away from the heart. It's carrying the deoxygenated blood and it's carrying it away, so it's an artery. It goes to our lungs where the gas exchange occurs um, and so that oxygen can be picked up and then it goes into the pulmonary vein and here's that exception again. Even though it's a vein, it's carrying oxygenated blood because it came straight from the heart and it goes into the left atrium. From there, it goes through the bicuspid valve, also called the mitral valve, into the left ventricle, through the aortic valve, into the largest artery we have in our body called the aorta, and then to out to the rest of the body. So you need to be able to name those steps from start to finish. And then the last thing for today is labeling the heart. I'm going to leave um, a practice labeling thing. You will have to label the heart on the test, all the different ventricles, all the different valves and so forth. Um, and that should be it for today. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.